it's Puck again. Um, I just recently did a vlog for a friend of mine who's doing a research paper project thing um, and who needed a vlog for that. But that reminded me of how I haven't actually come on here to perform a poem in a while, so I decided I'd do that. Um, for those just joining, uh, hi, I'm Robin Goodfellow Malamud, also known as Puck. Pronouns, vi verbis, they, them, theirs. Um, I'll put all that information down in the description. Um, and I dressed up really nicely for you for when I did Garden of Proserpine, but um, the Ballad of Bill Mackay is set in the Arctic wilds, and I do not feel like putting on a great big fur coat right now, considering it is um, over 80 degrees right now, Fahrenheit. So you're just going to have to pretend that I am a uh, dog musher in the Arctic wilds. So this is the Ballad of Bill Mackay. I took a contract to bury the body of blasphemous Bill Mackay, wherever, whenever, or whatsoever the manner of death he die, whether he die in the light of day or under the peak-faced moon, in cabin or dance hall, camp or dive, mucklocks or patent shoon, in velvet tundra or virgin peak, by glacier, drift or draw, in muskeg hollow or canyon gloom, by avalanche, fang or claw, by battle, murder, or sudden wealth, by pestilence, hooch, or lead, I swore by the book I'd follow and look, till I found my tomb was dead. For Bill was a dinky kind of cuss, and his mind was mighty sot on a dinky patch with flowers and grass and a civilized boneyard lot. And where he died or how he died, it didn't matter a damn as so long as he had a grave with frills and a tombstone epigram. So I promised him, and he paid the price in good Chichaco coin, which the same I blowed in that very night down in the tenderloin. And I painted a three-foot slab of pine, here lies poor Bill Mackay, and I hung it up on my cabin wall, and I waited for Bill to die. Years passed away, and at last one day came a squall with a story strange of a long deserted line of traps way back of the Bighorn Range, of a little hut by the Great Divide, and a white man, stiff and still, lying there by his lungs himself, and I figured it must be Bill. I remembered the contract I'd made with him, and I took down from the shelf the swelled back black box with the silver plate he'd picked out for himself, and I filled it full of grub and hooch, and I slung it on my sleigh, and then I harnessed up my team of dogs and was off at dawn of day. You know what it's like in the Yukon wild when it's 69 below? When the ice worms wriggle their purple heads through the crust of the pale blue snow? When the pine trees crack like little guns in the silence of the wood? And the icicles hang down like tusks under the parka hood? When the stovepipe smoke breaks sudden off and the sky is weirdly lit and a careless feel of a bit of steel burns like a red-hot spit? When the mercury's a frozen ball and the frost fiend stoops to kill, well, it's just like that the day when I set out to look for Bill. Half dazed, half grazed in the winter wild with its grim, heart-breaking woes and the ruthless strife for a grip on life that only the sourdough knows. North by the compass, north I press, river and peak and plain, past like a dream I slept to loose and waked to dream again. River and plain and mighty peak, and who could stand unawed? As their summits blazed, he could stand on days at the foot of the throne of God. North, I north, through a land accursed, shunned by the scouring brutes, and all I heard was my own harsh word and the whine of the Malamutes. Till at last I came to a cabin squat, built in the side of the hill, and I burst in the door, and there on the floor, frozen to death, Bill. Ice, white ice, like a winding sheet, sheathing each smoke grimed wall. Ice on the stovepipe, ice on the bed, ice gleaming over all. Sparkling ice on the dead man's chest, glittering ice in his hair. Ice on his fingers, ice in his heart, ice in his glassy stare. Hard as a log and trussed like a frog, with arms and legs outspread. I gazed at the coffin I'd brought for him. Gazed at the gruesome dead, and at last I spoke. Bill <laughs> liked his joke, but still, gall darn his eyes. A man had ought to consider his mates in the way he goes and dies. Have you ever stood in a little hut in the shadow of the pole 
with a little coffin six by three and a grief you can't control. Have you ever sat by a frozen corpse that looks at you with a grin and seems to say, you may try all day, but you'll never jam me in? Well, I ain't a man of the quitting kind, but I never felt so blue as I sat there gazing at that stiff, considering what I'd do. Then I rose and kicked off the husky dogs that were nosing round about, and I built a roaring fire in the stove started to thaw Bill out. Well, I thawed and thawed for 13 days, but it didn't seem no good. His arms and legs stuck out like pegs, as if they was made of wood. The last I said, it ain't no use. He's froze too hard to thaw. He's obstinate and he won't lie straight. So I guess I got to saw. So I sawed off poor Bill's arms and legs, and I laid him snug and straight in that little coffin, six by three, with a dinky silver plate. I came down near to shed a tear as I nailed him safely down. Then I put him away in my Yukon sleigh, and I started back to town. And I buried him, as the contract was, in a narrow grave and deep. And there he is waiting the great clean-up when the judgment's loose head sweep. I smoke my pipe and I meditate the light of the midnight sun, and sometimes I wonder if they was the awful things I done. And as I sit and the parson talks, expounding of the law, I often think of poor old Bill, and how hard he was to saw. Ballad of Blasphemous Bill by Robert Service. I hope you enjoyed my performance of it. Although, unfortunately, there wasn't any uh, atmospheric stuff because it is too damn hot. Um, oh, I'm spending a summer in Boston now and having a really wonderful time. I have a full-time job now and amazing housemates, so my life's pretty rocking right now. Um, as for uh, the rest of my life, um, Aside from work and living, I don't actually have one. <laughs> uh, I'm slowly learning how to code things, um, and other than that, I still haven't worked on sending out poems to various um, magazines or literary journals. Um, that is still part of a planned summer project for me, but I have not begun it yet. Um, so that's all from me, and um, please feel free to comment on the poetry or my life or request poems, especially request poems because I will memorize them if you tell me to, um, in the comments below. Um, you can also email me. I'm going to post this stuff on Tumblr probably. Uh, so yeah, talk to you soon.